Holy smokes, I think there are three secrets and nobody is telling you when it comes to the Apple credit card. Let's get right into those three secrets because folks, I've watched almost every single video, almost every single article I've read about the Apple credit card and nobody's picking up on these three things and I'd really appreciate your comments below on what you think about the possibility of each of the following three things happening thanks to the Apple credit card. Let's get into Apple. This is Apple Card. We already know that the Apple credit card offers 1% to 3% back depending on where and how you buy. That is 1% if you use the card, 2% back if you use Apple Pay where Apple Pay is accepted, and 3% back if you happen to be shopping in the Apple Store. Now we also know that you get cash back daily instead of some kind of reconciliation at the end of the month where you kind of accrue cash back over the month and then you get this sort of rewarded check in the mail or statement cash back credit by using most of other cashback credit cards. Now, while statement credits and checks in the mail with your cashback might end up being options for Apple, Apple's preferred method for you to receive and use your cashback is actually through what is called Apple Cash, an Apple Cash card. Now, Apple doesn't explicitly tell you this, but in the fine print of what Apple Cash is, we find out that Apple Cash is actually backed by Green Dot Bank which all of a sudden means Apple Cash is much more like a savings account and a debit card than what we think of it as, a virtual wallet that holds virtual cash. Instead, this is really like having a savings account and debit card built in and branded under the Apple logo. So you can spend it, just like cash. This is very similar to the fact that the Apple credit card, while not created by a bank, a credit card created by Apple, not a bank, is actually backed by Goldman Sachs, who also happens to be a leader in the subprime mortgage scandal of 2007, where they admitted to defrauding investors and agreed to pay a $5.1 billion settlement and serviced by MasterCard. Now, why does this matter? And why should you care that Apple Cash is basically a virtual debit card with cash that you're accruing? Well, ask yourself this. What is Apple Cash now going to be used for much more than it presently is used for? reimbursing your friends and family or giving people money that you owe, which is oddly similar to exactly what PayPal and Venmo do. Now I believe, and I will go as far as saying that Apple is entering the credit card marketplace in part to boost the use of Apple Cash by forcing you to use Apple Cash as a way of spending your rewards money. No points, no. How do I redeem this again? Well, now what is that going to do to PayPal and Venmo? Well, since with PayPal and Venmo, you have to go through the process of actually loading your PayPal and Venmo balance with money from your bank account, Apple Cash has a unique advantage that you have this money growing every time you use the Apple credit card. So you may as well spend it, and rather than using PayPal and Venmo, you may as well Apple cash me. So folks, the number one big secret I see is Apple is secretly trying to figure out how to rob market share from something Apple has not yet been successful in. That is taking over the domain of PayPal and Venmo and even services like Zelle. Now, since we already know that Apple cash automatically gets filled up on your credit card every single day in the form of Apple cash back, what psychological impacts is this going to have? Well, in my opinion, there are two major impacts. Number one, and I've kind of already mentioned this, but it leads to point number two, is number one, you're not really going to be inclined to use PayPal and Venmo anymore, but that is going to lead to the psychological impact that because you're now replacing having to open up the PayPal and Venmo app, and you're not having to transfer money into there, making that sort of painful transaction of moving money from your bank to PayPal or Venmo, you'll be psychologically, number two, inclined to spend more using your Apple credit card because your Apple credit card is the reason you have Apple cash available to spend. What a brilliant manipulation by Apple. So buying something is as easy as... And after all, what is Apple best known for? Figuring out how to manipulate us to become true fanboys and girls. Now let's talk about secret number two. When you go to apply for the Apple credit card, it's presumed that you're going to do so through the Apple Wallet app on your iPhone. Well, by doing that, you're going to have to enter your name, your social, and your date of birth. The only real two things missing from the Wallet app right now 
are your social security number and your date of birth, which a lot of people carry their social security card and their driver's license that has their date of birth in their actual wallet. So I don't think it'll be long before we see that data integrated into the Apple Wallet app. But that's not the secret. Nobody really cares about that, except for maybe those of us that think, I don't really want Apple to have my social, though probably you shouldn't be kidding yourself, they probably already know it. What the big secret is, is what does this enable Apple to do? Think about it for a second. If you can apply for the Apple credit card through the wallet app, entering your social and your date of birth, let's say you had the option to save that information. What can you do now? Well, next time Apple releases a credit card, you could open up the wallet app, press apply, and they've already got all of your information. You now have a streamlined way to apply for credit cards, but that is still not yet the big secret. Although maybe you've already realized what the big secret might be. I believe Apple is entering the credit card marketplace to do what Apple did to retail stores by changing the shopping experience, to do what Apple did to the music sales industry by ripping apart albums and selling singles for 99 cents or a buck 29 as a la carte options rather than the entire album. Something that was hotly contested by the music industry, by the way. And also remember that Apple was the front runner in creating app stores. Well, guess what I think Apple might be onto next? an Apple credit card store. That is, why not have Apple partner with 10 to 20 different banks so that you could seamlessly compare 10 to 20 different credit cards right through your Apple wallet, possibly even be pre-approved for different cards with various different credit limits so that now you can compare all of the various fees and options and benefits and perks of every single card. And with the simple push of a button, apply for and integrate a new credit card into your wallet app. All most likely now rewarding you with Apple Cash, which remember, the killer to PayPal and Venmo. And it all lives in the wallet app on your iPhone. So it's always with you. Folks, I think the Apple credit card plans here are much more deep than any of us are really realizing. Now let's talk about secret number three. We've talked about Apple trying to take away from the domain of PayPal and Venmo. We've talked about the potential of an Apple credit card marketplace, kind of like an app store for credit cards. Well, what is next on the agenda? Well, folks, ask yourselves, what is everybody fearful of today in the marketplace? A recession. What else are people, well, some people, fearful of as well? The fact that maybe the dollar and what we call fiat currencies, or basically money that isn't backed by anything, like the euro's not backed by gold, the dollar isn't backed by gold, all of these are just sort of currencies, much like virtual currencies that aren't backed by anything. So what is missing from Apple? Well, of course, the Apple virtual currency the iCrypto. And so while this is complete speculation, along with really one and two, I want you to ask yourself, when has an actual trusted company, other than BitConnect, so, 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 BitConnect, entered into the marketplace for virtual currencies? Think about it one step further. Apple is now going to control where you get your credit. Apple is going to control where you save your cash. Apple is going to control how you pay, and Apple is going to control the device that controls all of those things. And it's the only credit card designed to take advantage of the power of iPhone. What's next? Why not control the actual denomination itself, the actual currency itself? By being the first company to introduce a cryptocurrency that is actually a trusted company, we might see millions of more people open up their interests to cryptocurrency. Now again, folks, all three of these options are pretty much complete speculation, but I want you to let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Are not all three of these options true potential? Would it not make sense for Apple to want to grow Apple Pay when Walmart Pay is right on Apple Pay's butt and even Starbucks Pay is sneaking up to member usage for Apple Pay? Why not make Apple Pay the way to go by encouraging people to use Apple Pay, to now use Apple Cash, 
to not only compete with these other methods of paying, like even Amazon Pay, but also to take control of how you spend your cash back, increasing the use of Apple cash back, eliminating the need for PayPal and Venmo, while at the same time giving you the option to shop for different credit cards that will all circle back to Apple cash back. The only thing missing, folks, Apple currency. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. And of course, check out the description below for a coupon code and some awesome courses uh, to learn about real estate investing and real estate sales. Thanks for watching.